Hello and welcome to this rather informal update on a piece of kit the channel has now been using for a year, namely the RetroTINK 5X. This has been the backbone of the signal conversion from the computer to the HDMI capture for the past year. If you've seen the previous video, you'll know that I ordered it sometime in August 2021. It turned up um, in September, about six weeks later. And initially, really, it wasn't good for my old computers. I plugged it into the Amstrad CPC and Spectrum Plus 2, and I'd have jittering and weird things I just couldn't get rid of. I spoke to the creator at the time. Um, he said it was the, dev the computer's fault and potentially the cables. But come this time last year, a firmware update came out, and there were suddenly more options in the firmware, and I was able to dial out all of the problems. And from that moment on, the RetroTINK became the device of choice, really, instead of having a DVD recorder that converted the signals live before I captured it using an analog capture system, analog to digital. Um, what I was now doing was using the RetroTINK to convert the SCART signals, the S-Video, the composite, and turn it into wonderful 1080p upscaled uh, digital video that I could then convert via a Blackmagic HDMI capture device. And that was what you were seeing on the screen. And you started to see that on Chinevision from about kind of January, February last year onwards. So really, yeah, it's not been, in terms of the videos, a full year, but I've been using it a full year. And I thought, well, given all that's going on at the moment in the retro scene, we've seen, for example, recreations of monitors um, that don't come with the LCD <laughs> on the Kickstarter included. Optional extras for later, but never mind. But there's been a lot of talk about signal conversion and authenticity and so on, and people are finding it harder to get displays that accept SCART and your old computers. And I thought, well, I've been recommending the RetroTINK to people, but perhaps we should do a, a little update because version three of the firmware has just come out. And I've done an update the other day. It was sadly quite painful uh, because the first firmware update failed and eventually it did do the second one, but it it froze for a very long time during the update. I hope you have the footage on the screen. But it took far longer than the minute or so of freezing that the readme file on or the website said. Uh, it took about five minutes. I was thinking, oh my goodness, have I break my device? But no it had updated on the second attempt. And the new firmware adds things like that I've, I've been crying out for, being able to name your presets. Because with the RetroTINK, if you're thinking I'm gonna buy this device and plug it in and it's just gonna work, well, if you've got a SNES or a PS1 or one of those really dull consoles, then yeah, it's probably gonna work first off. But if you've got something actually interesting, like a BBC Micro, a Atari ST, Amiga, Amstrad CPC, Spectrum, and so on, chances are it's not going to go just on the defaults. Uh, the Amiga generally does, actually. The Amiga generally does. But you will find yourself doing some tweaking in the settings to stop it, the picture twitching or occasionally jittering. It's one of these little things where you'll think it's fine and suddenly five minutes in there'll be, oh, did that jitter? And then you'll be trying to catch it and just do it. it. It's unfortunately part of the course with a device like this that um, you're going to have to fiddle a little bit. But I've had a fairly solid setup for the past year. In fact, um, I haven't done all the firmware updates this year because the firmware updates wipe out all your presets. So I'm thinking, oh, I've got about eight presets on this thing. I don't want to wipe them all. But now I can name the presets. I thought, right, let's just wipe it and start again. So I have been slowly adding my machines back in. Now, perhaps I should have noted what the settings were beforehand, but never mind. But you can now name your presets on here, which is really good. So you can set CPC. Yeah, I've got CPC when I come off the Spectrum. Um, C64 and I have ones for the ST and other machines as soon as I come to use them. And there's also some new options in the firmware for experimental screen modes that won't be of interest to you or me, I suspect. But there's there's extra things there if you want to go to 1440 and so on.
you will hopefully have seen the picture quality increase on Chini Vision over the past year. In fact, one person said to me, Chini, it's looking too much like emulation now, which I disagree, because if you actually look at the picture, you will see all those little analog idiosyncrasies in the picture. Um, you will see little jitters occasionally and stuff, because these are... Um, if the fridge kicks in in the next room along, um, sometimes, you know, the TV used to glitch very slightly and the retro tink will glitch as well. Sometimes you see it and I won't notice it at the time. I look at the edit and go, oh, it's, oh it doesn't matter. These are analogue devices, after all, um, you're running from with idiosyncratic signals. But a lot of these machines have never looked so good. One thing you do need to watch out for, and I didn't adhere to in the very earliest examples of me using this i think it was the swiv review it defaults to sharp in the deinterlacing gives you a sharpest picture i tend to go for the medium setting which looks far more authentic um so that that's something to keep in mind um if you don't know what this is it, it will take in scarp there and uh, also composite and s video on the back and components if you if your device supports that although again uk devices won't support that um you it comes with a remote which is just a recycled remote from another device um i complained about this at the time because none of the buttons relate to really what you're doing the arrows do but the rest don't you kind of get used to it in the end but one problem i've had over the past year is the remote not working and you undo the battery compartment and the battery seems to slip forward. If you see that there, you press them back in and it'll all be fine. Then a week later, you'll have found the batteries have slipped forward again. And these are Panasonic cells. They're not a funny size. I, I must get around to putting a little bit of foam rubber or something on the inside to hold those batteries in tighter because you just pick it up, you go bam, 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 and it doesn't work. I, I generally don't use the buttons on the front because they are pretty just kind of nasty you'd, you'd use them if you lost your remote but you're not going to lose your remote hopefully um the device is quite light as well one thing to say about it, it feels like a, a kind of low-end scart converter i did what I, I did worry at the time about the quality of the scart connector it still held up i still worry about it and you can see the kind of scratches on the plastic box there where things get plugged in and unplugged though it does go through a scart switcher before i use it but you inevitably end up plugging stuff in directly sometimes to e work out what what the problems are it's great though i mean these are all minor niggles it, it, it is absolutely great if i was going to change a couple of things i would perhaps have a nice solid metal box that would be nice uh for it to come with rubber feet on it i've had to add those because it was just sliding around and for it to have a USB C power input because it's 2022 when this came 2021 when this came out 2023 now and um yeah you know usb-c would be nice but it's great and it gives a great picture and once you've got it set up it's fantastic as i say you're gonna have to fiddle around with it the biggest problem if you're buying one of these is the cost if you're in the uk 278 pounds to buy it but you're going to get stung for 51 pounds import duty and vat on the is that the v or is it just the import duty anyway grand total when i bought this and this may have changed was 329 pounds to buy this um and luckily for me that was funded by the chili vision patreon supporters so again thank you to them because they enable all the madness on this channel and it has made a, a huge difference um it, i'm not having to swap around dvd recorders anymore because some of them don't work different machines and so on everything seems to go through here even the pc capture goes in via the scar i've got another retro tink device that converts vga to scart and then it captures from there of course there are other options out there if you're looking for a scan converter there's the gbs which i always found to be cheap and cheerful and, and not terribly good there's those generic things you see on ebay as well Again, got a, I've got a drawer full of those. They're all absolute rubbish. The OSSC, which, yeah, you can have a little bit of configuration like this, but it doesn't have all the kind of clever stuff this had. This also does CRT emulation. If that's your thing, if you want your LCD to look like CRT, 
then this has got it all in there and it looks good if that's what you want. I find it a novelty, but you may find that an important thing. Uh, the OSSC is another you know, option, as I say. And then you've got this, which I haven't reviewed on the channel yet. I've been playing with it a bit. It's the Medusa. Now, it costs £171, or this one cost me... Oh, no, £171, sorry, currently, as of today. I didn't pay that because I pre-ordered this. And I still can't get the blooming protective film off the screen there. If anyone knows how to get the protective film off that screen, let me know, because it's just stuck. Anyway, the Medusa is not an upscaler or a CRT emulator like the RetroTink. It is just a scan converter. Um, it will take your SCART. It will automatically, hopefully, hopefully, usually automatically fingerprint your computer or console. It will say, ah, yes, I know that's an Amstrad CPC. And then it will automatically configure itself and it will squirt the signal out the back here via, I think, VGA or DVI. You will notice there's no HDMI because licensing cost for that. RetroTink does have HDMI, but it's a simple converter, simple converter cable, um, which I've got loads of actually, that takes DVI to HDMI and that will do the job because HDMI, HDMI is part of the DVI specification and this sends out the audio via DVI as well, which officially isn't part of the DVI specification, but most HDMI devices will happily accept it. You've also got to pass through there uh, in and out. So, yeah, and that, uh, another one that doesn't have a USB-C power input. Again, lads, it's it's 2023 now. Um, can't we just have USB-C on everything? Anyway, that doesn't matter. Um, it has an OLED. Is it an OLED screen? I haven't turned it on for a while. I think it is. That's all the status stuff is displayed on there. But as I say, the Medusa will let you plug in all your devices to a modern screen, but it does not upscale. What you're paying that extra money for, that 130, 140 pounds, um, more than that, in fact, isn't it? <laughs> Far more than that. What you're paying all the extra money for with the RetroTINK is that upscaling, which it is quite superb doing. I will do a full video on the Medusa at some stage. Again, it suffers from these nasty... Can't people make buttons anymore? What happened to a nice button? But it does have this nice... I mean, this is... <laughs> I'm not going to knock the retro thing, but I mean, this really does have the feel of a, a SCART <laughs> switcher from the 1990s. It's, I mean, I know it's going to be light because it's all done you know, with a few chips inside, but this really does feel... I, I, I just wish that had the build quality of this and perhaps the SCART on the top. So the, the other thing is I, I, I worry about the weight of the SCART on there. It just feels flimsy. I mean, this isn't hugely better, but it, it doesn't seem to move around as much. But I mean, these are all minor niggles. But I, mean, I want to mention this stuff because... A lot of the reviews of the RetroTINK when it came out, the people who reviewed it seemed to skip over stuff. They seemed to go, yes, this is brilliant. I've plugged it into my Amiga. It's the ultimate retro device. It's like, well, yeah. What about the BBC Micro? What about the MSX? What about the C16? What about all these other computers? And of course, as I said, the Amiga works pretty much straight off the bat. And I got it and went, oh, first thing I'm going to plug it into is obviously my Amstrad CPC because, you know, Amstrad fanboy, paid by Amstrad PLC to uh, shill for Alan Sugar, as everybody knows. And so I plugged it into my 6128 and it was glitching. And it took until Christmas, as I say, to get it to a state where it was actually working. And I'd, I'd still buy this today. Absolutely. I think this is this is what you want for your retro signal conversion. But it is a hell of a lot of money. £329 it cost me. That was September 2021, August 2021. And I've got no idea what it cost today, whether the Medusa 
is a suitable alternative. I mean, you can buy, and I've got one. I haven't tested it fully yet. You can buy upscalers fairly cheaply secondhand. I've got one in the drawer, and I'm going to wonder if it's going to look like with this. But I, I need to do a full proper test on this because really I've only had this running on a handful of systems to date because just time, just time. But yeah, at some point early this year, I'll get onto this properly. But I wanted to update you guys. Let me put that down. Oh, don't want to drop it. I'll leave it there. I wanted to update you guys on the retro tink because as I say, there's been so much buzz around certain kind of recreations and monitors and stuff on, you know, the big YouTubers kind of promoting them and, and so on. I just want to say, look, if you've got that kind of money and you want the ultimate upscaler, and no one's paying me to say this, as I say, this was funded by Chini Vision patron supporters. I've got a year of yeah, hundreds of hours of capture using this thing, not directly capturing, but obviously this doing signal conversion, hundreds of hours of Chini Vision now. And yeah, sometimes the remote annoys me. And yes, I worry the SCART connector's too flimsy. And But so far, it has been absolutely rock solid. Any any problems, when you see glitches on Chini Vision sometimes, it is usually, in fact, almost certainly because I have flipped to the wrong setting on my RetroTink. Because the, uh, previously it was all numbered. So I have to remember, ah, right, it's Atari ST3 or 4. And I've got it written down somewhere, but it's like, you don't, you just got to do it. And you realise you've been capturing the ST on the Amiga setting and suddenly the ST looks a bit dodgy. WWF, I think, had a problem similar to that on the ST footage, I think, when I reviewed that game. And now the presets are named. Hopefully, all that should go away. All that should go away. But... You know, if you're looking for something and you've got the money and you can afford it, then I think this is the ultimate upscaling and conversion device. I would definitely look at getting a switcher to before you send the SCART into there because you, if you've got like 10, 12, 15 computers replugging, that, that's not going to last. That's not going to last. And you've already seen the scratches and marks around there just from the past year. So... I would plug in a switcher on there. But yeah, that's a year update on the Retro Tink. I, you know, the, as I say, I was initially skeptical when I got it because I had all these problems. But after a year, after all the firmware updates, I think this is an utterly solid device. And yeah, I think the build quality could be better. But I think it's the, the must own retro signal conversion device. But perhaps the producer, at least without the upscaling, will challenge it when I come to fully test it.